Welcome back and in this video I'm gonna go ahead and continue breaking down the engine so I have it upside down now because I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the um, oil pan and then start you know breaking these apart right here so um yeah so I went ahead and removed every single timing every nut bolt possible that's on the timing I just went ahead and removed it um, I put it in a box here baggy with all the screws and whatnot, all the gears and whatnot first things first is going ahead to remove the oil pan and if you've been underneath this car before you know that there are like a billion of these um, 10 millimeter um, bolts that need to be removed if you're wondering what this why these two are missing this is where the um, the water pump for the supercharger coolant goes right here so that's why in order to remove um, the water pump for that these two are gone so that's why these two are missing the oil pan is now off and who wants to see some more carnage let's take a look got a little bit of shrapnel here and the most of it is right here so that is pretty bad but it's expected So this right here is the oil oil pump right here. So this sucks up the oil in through here with this little mesh grill. That's what this is for, so it doesn't suck up, you know, pieces like this. And this hole right here is where your dipstick is right here. When you check your dipstick, this is where it's coming from. Yeah, so this is what it looks like with the oil pan removed. After um, looking in, you know, into these cylinders here, um, so there is more damage than what um, we saw, than what I saw here with cylinder one. So once I remove this oil pump, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit more because this is kind of in the way a better view of some more damage that I was able to see. Here's a recap of what I've done so far. So I removed that little crossover bar, which went from here to here, and then the oil pump is now right here. So this is your oil pump right here. And right there is like a big old long um, Allen screw, if you wanna say, that turns the gear. So the oil pump is gear driven. And here's the underside that we don't see, but it's like this. So that Allen, so just picture that right there. It sits like this. And there's a big old long um, Allen screw that connects to right here. And, and right here on the timing, there's three gears. So there's one, two, three. So this gear right here is for your um, oil pump. This one right here is your power steering. And this one's for your um, AC right there. To give her a better view, so obviously this is removed. So this gear right here, this is the Allen I was telling about that goes all the way to the oil pump. This one right here is for the, the power steering. And this gear right here, is for your AC right here. So hopefully that makes sense what I was just referring to. So I'm gonna go through the damage that I seen additional damage from work my way from here and work my way up that way. So the first things first is this right here is broken off. It's being held, I guess it was held on by this O-ring. And in here, what well, looks like to be a check valve. So if you're not familiar with check valves, they only allow flow to go one direction. In case it has to go back, it can't go back. It only goes in one direction. That's the point of a check valve. And I believe it went down in here, right here. So this is out of the way, slash trash. And right here, you can see there's a big old gap right here. As compared to right here, there's still like, you know, if you want to say like a bridge, for analogy, you know, there's a bridge right here you can cross. But here, something broke that bridge down and I'll give you a hint it's this rod right here so yeah obviously that rod's bent um, I I don't know the lighting here like actually let me get a flashlight real quick okay so I got that flashlight so here you can see cylinder number four this one right here is bent and it is pressing against or kissing against this the crank right here so that valve is bent, so both cylinders four and one, yeah, um, are damaged. 
Now when we go to cylinders two and five, cylinder five, or I mean broad number five right here, which my light is pointing at, that does have a slight bent. So that's damage. Um, I can't, so here's cylinder two. Um, one of the ones that got that had water in on top of the piston, um, I can't, from my angle, I can't see that it's damaged or anything with the rod. I don't see anything. And then for the rest of the cylinders, right here and above, I can't see because this is in the way. From what I'm seeing, in order to remove this upper um, belly pan portion, um, you see these screws right here. So these are, um, the you're gonna need the triple square, the M8 size. So there's obviously right here on the outside throughout and then there's also here in the inside so so there's you know right here 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 and here here that I see so that's what's containing this upper oil pan um, to the rest of to the block so I'm pretty sure those are all the screws that needed to be removed um, so two screws that actually kind of were sneaky to find um, so I did remove all the screws that you can see on the outside and within the oil pan and there's one screw right here and another screw right here that are very very sneaky so don't forget about these two before because I was, I was trying to like pull this you know pry it open but I'm just not um, struggling and when I was looking around to make sure I didn't miss anything that's when I saw these two screws. So yeah, so don't forget about these two if you are removing or just want to know it just for fun. The oil, the upper oil pan is removed. Um, one thing um, for me to get it off, um, I used a, a flathead that I use because I don't really care about. So this is kind of like my pry bar, everything kind of to do um, related. And then I used the mallet. So I just found one corner and just started chipping away for it to for it to eventually all lift off. So so um, here is the upper part of the oil pan. Um, the only damage that we can I can see from this side is obviously for where I mentioned before where this um, check valve is. Um, I don't really see any more damage but it doesn't matter because this right here you know obviously this is pretty much just trash right now. So um, as I've mentioned before obviously here's the damage from the rod sticking out. I already talked about these two and these were the two cylinders I wasn't able to, um, I guess four cylinders. So this rod, it looks pretty straight. I don't see any damage or slight bend to it. Um, this rod right here for cylinder seven, um, I, I, don't, I can't really sell from this angle. Um, same thing with this one with cylinder um, I think eight. Sorry, I can't really think off the top of my head right now. Um, I can't see any bends or anything and here is cylinder number four and cylinder four actually looks um, there might be a slight bend I'm not exactly too sure so but it doesn't matter because these rods are not going to be used anyways so right now okay. so if you can see behind me I got a, I actually got a little bit smarter with try to deal with this heat I actually have a fan but I have it off when I'm recording so you don't hear the swish sound of the wind. So um, I'm going to go ahead and organize here because I do have a lot of bolts, you know, right now kind of slightly scattered. I'm going to organize, you know, one not before I start tearing this apart right here. But um, so far I'm making pretty good progress with what I want to get done so far. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to just go ahead and organize and then I'll continue going back to um, tearing down this um, engine block. So all that's really left is this part of the block and then this part of the block. So there's only two pieces left to eventually fully fully dismantle. So um, next, um, go ahead removing these bolts right here. Um, so these are a different um, pattern bolt and the bolt and the socket that you'll need is a um, E14 and it's like the shape of a star here. So. And the same is going to be with the um, with the rod. So these are same star pattern, but these are E12s. Once these bolts are removed, then the next set of bolts you'll need are the, just the, your regular um, Allen um, 
so Allen sockets that are along here throughout the side of the engine. One thing I want to add as I am taking this apart, you know, I'm learning new things here. So um, the bolts that go towards the inside are different than the bolts that are up here on the outer side. So here's, I can show you. So on my left, the bolts are, these are the ones on the inside and on my right, um, they're the bolts that are on the outside. So obviously there's um, different in size and thickness. Um, so when I was looking at the top part, when they were still on the block, um, I didn't really notice there was a size and difference, but now that I look at it, there is a size and difference when you look at it from the top view. So yeah, so just a FYI, this, these little ones are the top ones, I mean the outside, and then the bigger ones are these ones right here. So just FYI. Finally got the um, lower part of the block um, removed from the upper part of the block. So now I have the whole crankcase um, visible now. Um, but for right now, um, it's a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna clean up and call it a night and then I'll pick it up um, whenever I get some more free time. Engine block is finally disassembled. It's right there. And then I got the rods and the pistons over there. So first, go ahead and talk about the piston rods and see the damage. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the pistons and the rods um, first. So the pistons are facing this way to my right. These are in good conditions. And then the three pistons up here facing to my left are bad. For me, this left hand side right here, this is the driver's side. And for and the right side is the uh, passenger side. So this right here is cylinder one. So this was obviously noted when I saw the hole in the block. So obviously it's twisted and broke off. As far as damage, obviously the rod is damaged. Um, as far as damage to the piston itself, um, it got scuffed right there and there's like a little pointy piece right there. So I have to be careful not to poke myself with. And as mentioned, um, for rods one, two, I mean two, three, and four, these are good. Now on this side, driver's side, for me, cylinder number four, um, damage here was a bent rod and right here where my thumb is pointing at um, it's cracked so the rod whoops so the rod did crack a little bit right there and as far as damage to the piston itself um, the only damage I see is that scuff mark right there and then this is cylinder number five right here um, the only damage to this was just the rod. So from this point of view, it doesn't look like it, but when you put it to the side right here, you can see how it's a slight bent right here. So obviously that is a damaged rod right there. So that's all the damage internally from the piss from the rods and the pistons. Now I'll go ahead and talk about the block now. So here I have the block upside down. So this right here is the passenger side and this is the driver's side right here. So here's cylinder one, here's that hole. Um, so I definitely put a pretty big chip here in cylinder one and this piece right here got bent while at it. And then here on cylinder four, it uh, definitely took a chip out of this part of the cylinder wall right here. Um, as far as any other damages here, um, no damage. I don't see any um, damage at all. And these cylinder walls, um, no damage at all. So the only damage on this was this piece right here, this cylinder wall here, that, and a hole right there. And the damage on this part of the block um, was the hole where the rod was sticking out right here. So this is where the oil cooler sits on this side. And there's that hole. So you can definitely see it did some damage, that rod. And when I first saw this initially from the outside, I knew this was damaged when I removed the oil cooler. That's when I noticed this was damaged. But I didn't, I thought this was savable, but it wasn't until I removed the oil pan that here, which is where the cylinder one is, where that rod, it definitely, um, broke off this piece right here. So there was definitely a lot of shrapnel within that oil pan. So yeah, so that pretty much summarizes the whole um, 
damage done um, because of the hydro lock situation. Right now, the plan for the block, um, obviously I'm just gonna throw away this piece and this piece, and I might wanna keep this. Um, as much as I wanna use it as a coffee table, that probably won't be. I'm just gonna just keep it just to store it and use it as like, I don't know, maybe a sentimental value, I guess. Um, I really don't know what I plan on doing in the long run with that block right there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. Um, the other two parts, those are all trash. As far as the rods, um, I still don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll probably keep one good one, and I'll definitely keep that one. That one I really do wanna keep. So, because technically, um, even though these are still good, but we're gonna want some rods, you know, especially stock OEMs, but, and especially at one, two, three, five, you know, for a VA who's gonna want just five, so um, I'm not gonna try to sell those. So, um, as far as any plans now, so as this video is coming to an end here, um, that's as much as I can do when it comes to tearing down this engine. That's pretty much all that I had planned. The next thing I'm gonna be doing is, um, I'm, you know, doing some research and ordering some parts on what I need, mostly just like O-rings. I'll probably change out some new um, sensors and whatnot. Um, seeing all the little m minor things I need for the next engine. In the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and actually order parts to, I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild the water pump. Um, and I still have to check if the starter's good because um, I don't know if it got, um, if I fried it when I, was, when I drove for that pretty much through, drove through an ocean so I'm gonna go ahead and test that starter to make sure that it's still good if it's not working then that kind of sucks I have to get a new one because that is actually fairly a brand new pretty much a close to new starter new to me starter in it I hope they didn't fry it, fry it fingers crossed so that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing as mentioned by just parts o-rings new sensors and whatnot for the new um, engine and then just kind of rebuild the water pump and try to test out that new starter so I'll document that so um, with all that said um hope if you're you know new to this platform or you've been on this platform for a while and you never seen one of these taken apart hopefully this series has um you guys learned something new and it's really not that bad taking things apart it's putting it back together is the tricky part so always document and keep track of what you take part and where goes where so um with that note i'll end it here and hope you guys thank you for watching and have a good one